Doris Lessing speaks about her childhood in Africa and she also talks about the people in Zimbabwe who are starving for knowledge. Well, people in the privileged areas had the inanities of the internet and they preferred internet instead of books. A hunger for books is Doris Lessing's acceptance speech while accepting the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2007 on 7th of December. She begins by describing her journey through Zimbabwe, saying that she was passing through a road that was filled with clouds of dust and stumps of trees. She drove through miles and miles of tree stumps and charred of fires. But back in 1956, uh, once upon a time when she roamed that road, it was filled with the most wonderful forest that the world has ever seen. All those trees and natural habitat was destroyed by human because man needed to eat to survive and for which he needed firewood to make fire. She tells us that she visited a friend who was uh, a teacher from London and who was an idealistic teacher. That means a teacher who thought that this world could be perfect. I mean, he believed in the existence of a perfect world. There was this slogan and campaign around the world which spoke of helping the people living in Africa. Many people, organizations and politicians, leaders and even celebrities contributed to the campaign of Help Africa. Lessing's friend was one of those who was an idealistic soul and wanted nothing but to help Africa. But when he reached the school of Zimbabwe, he was shocked, which nearly led him to depression. Because when he first saw the Zimbabwe school, it was a small school of just four rooms built of bricks, which was built directly on the dust without any proper foundation. And the school included a small half room, a small brick room, um, to be the library. There was a blackboard in each classroom but the teacher had to keep the chalk in his pocket because it would get stolen by the children. There was no atlas, no globe, no textbook, no exercise book, no biros or pen. Doris remembers that when she was talking to her friend in a small room, the students, the people of Zimbabwe would drop in shyly and asked her to bring books. They were begging her for books, saying that, please send us some books. They've taught us how to read, but they have not provided books and we want to read. She also speaks about another friend from England who came to help Africa, but felt rather ill looking at the condition of the school. So basically what Doris Lessing wants to tell us through these examples is that the quality of education there was pathetic. There was another friend in Zimbabwe who told Doris Lessing that the people there could go hungry for days without food. And still they would not stop talking about books and how to get them. There were some people who were working at the grassroots level who went and personally uh, met the people there and talked to them and listened to their grievances and reported that there were many intelligent people among them. There were retired teachers, school students who were on vacation and holidays. She herself went and found that the people were hungry for books. They also wanted to read the same books as the Europeans, the whites, did. They wanted novels of all kinds. They wanted to read science fiction, poetry, detective stories, plays, DIY books, all of Shakespeare, etc. There were some popular books like Mayor of Casterbridge and Animal Farm. And the reason that these books were popular was simply because they were available. Doris Lessing worked with an organization that provided and supplied books to villages with the help of Norway and Sweden. She says that before Mugabe's reign of terror, a good book cost more than a month's wage. But now it was becoming more expensive. 
because it was not just about taking books to villages of Zimbabwe. They had the problem of transportation and fuel was expensive. But when they successfully take a package of books to these villagers, this package of books was greeted with tears in their eyes. Such was their hunger for books. People who could read would read it out to the people who could not read. They would teach them. And since there was no books written in their, their own local language, that is the Tonga language, they decided that some of them decided that they would translate the novels in their own Tonga language. Doris Lessing goes on to say that there is a saying that people get the government they deserve. But according to her, she believes that the people of Zimbabwe do not deserve the government that they have. They deserve better. She believes that the hunger for books in the people of Zimbabwe did not come from their own race of people, but it came from the white people. The white people who inspired them to learn how to read and write even before the reign of Mugabe. In the next paragraph, Doris Lessing talks about the other Nobel Prize winners like Orhan Pamuk and V.S. Naipaul. She recounts that Orhan Pamuk said that his father owned 500 books and she believes that Orhan Pamuk got his talent by being connected to this great tradition of the past. On the other hand, another Nobel laureate, V.S. Naipaul, had the Vedas very close to his memories of his family. He was encouraged to write books by his father and also he often loved to visit the British Library. According to her, to become a writer or in order to make literature, a person has to be closely connected to library, books and tradition. She goes on to say about the black writers of Zimbabwe who taught themselves how to read by reading the Mm, jam jars and the labels of the preserved fruits in cans. She talks about this person who found an old children encyclopedia from the garbage and taught himself how to read, self-taught. Those were the people who were hungering for knowledge that was or education that was beyond their reach. She was talking about overworking mothers who, had, uh, who lived in a small hut with many children and fighting over food and are still capable of bringing up writers. Their parents had been great storytellers and they had passed on these stories uh, through oral tradition. And in a generation or two, these remembered stories will be printed out in books. In the white man's world, books were easily available but in the African countries even though we're talking about the North African privileged areas publishing of books was a dream. Lessing goes on to say that we have plenty of books to read in our parts and plenty of words that some of the words we don't use at all. She believes that we actually have a treasure of knowledge and things to be inspired through the Egyptian culture or the Greeks and the Romans. There are mysterious wealth in this kind of civilization even today which are ready to be solved and ready to be found by whoever would take the trouble to do so. She believes that if these civilizations did not exist then our world would have been incomplete and empty. African storyteller dates back to the past when the shaman or the village priest, the religious priest, dances and chants around a giant fire in the clearing of a forest. Their stories begin with the fire, magic and the spirit world. The modern storyteller talks about the moment when they were touched by the fire, fire of inspiration. She concludes that each one of us is a storyteller. If in case our world is hit by um, a natural disaster or war or other calamities, our imagination will help us to recreate our story, which can be for better or for worse. 
even when this world is destroyed and human race washed, the storyteller will be our phoenix. A phoenix is a mystical bird with bright colors and of the imaginary world. The storyteller in the form of a phoenix will continue to live on, to speak of our story, to write our stories that will continue to tell our stories, recreate our stories in the most mystical way as the dream maker or the myth maker. That is all from me today. Thank you.